Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to speak about feeder pathways for glycolysis. Many carbohydrates besides glucose enter glycolysis after transforming into one of the glycolytic intermediates. Among these carbohydrates are polysaccharides like glycogen and starch, disaccharides like maltose, lactose, trehalose and sucrose, monosaccharides like fructose, mannose and galactose. First, let's see how glycogen can be converted into a glycolytic intermediate. Glycogen is a branched polymer of glucose. Glucose residues are linearly linked by alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond. And for every few glucose residues, the chain branches off via a alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond. The enzyme glycogen phosphorylase acts on alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond and and removes a glucose residue each time until it reaches a branch point. So each time it gives glucose 1 phosphate and the polymer 1 glucose unit shorter. In this reaction, the attacking species is inorganic phosphate and this reaction is called phosphorolysis. At the branch point, the debranching enzyme acts on alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond. The glucose 1-phosphate formed here is converted to glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. Glucose 6-phosphate is a glycolytic intermediate which can enter into glycolysis. Starch is the major source of carbohydrate in humans. The salivary alpha amylase hydrolyzes starch into short polysaccharides or oligosaccharides. The pancreatic alpha amylase then converts these converts these polysaccharides or oligosaccharides into disaccharides and trisaccharides like maltose and maltotriose, limit dextrins, fragments of amylopectin containing alpha-1,6 branch points uh, are also given out. These are further hydrolyzed by enzymes attached to the outer surface of the intestinal epithelial cells. The disaccharides formed are acted upon by their respective enzymes to give out monosaccharides. Like dextrinase acts on dextrin to produce D-glucose. Maltase acts on maltose to give 2 units of D-glucose. Lactase acts on lactose to give out uh, D-galactose and D-glucose each. Sucrase acts on sucrose to give out 1 molecule of D-fructose and D-glucose each. Trehalase acts on trehalose to give out two molecules of D-glucose. These monosaccharides formed are transported into epithelial cells, passed through blood to various tissues where they are phosphorylated and funneled into glycolytic sequence. Now let's see how monosaccharides other than glucose enter glycolysis. In muscles and kidney, hexokinase acts on fructose to produce fructose 6-phosphate which is a glycolytic intermediate and can enter into glycolysis. In liver, this pathway is a bit different where fructokinase acts on fructose to give fructose 1-phosphate, where aldolase acts on it and gives each molecule of each molecule of glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which are converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzymes triose kinase and triose phosphate isomerase respectively. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can enter into glycolysis. Galactose is converted to galactose 1-phosphate by the enzyme galactokinase. Galactose 1-phosphate is again converted to glucose 1-phosphate. Mannose is converted to mannose 6-phosphate by hexokinase. And phosphomannose isomerase enzyme converts mannose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate which can again enter into glycolysis. This is how glycolysis gets treated by different polysaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides and monosaccharides. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please support the channel.